Well, recently, Ken Wilshire took to the back roads of Tennessee and found a guy working an old time job with a new modern twist. He's a blacksmith, but instead of shoeing horses, he makes decorative art to please humans. Today, when you travel through the Tennessee countryside, you find some truly beautiful sights and sounds. But once you get off the trodden path and you really listen closely, you can hear some sounds of the past clanging through these hills and hollows. Way out in Reedyville, near the Rutherford Cannon County line, you sometimes can still hear the old sound of a blacksmith bending and shaping metals like they've done for centuries in this part of the country. And actually long, long before then. Joe Brown is one of the few remaining blacksmiths that carry on the trade today. He left a promising corporate management position to pursue an art he loves. For several years, we were trying to find something that would allow me to, to earn income from home. Blacksmithing was just the one that worked, but actually it was the one that was just right for me. I really fell in love with it the first time I tried it, had looked at woodworking and other forms of creating art at home. But uh, blacksmithing fell into my, I guess, some skill sets that I had from maintenance skills that I had in the past. And a whole lot of joy derived from it when you can take a piece of metal and shape it into an attractive work of art that someone thinks is worth their purchase of. It brings some, some job satisfaction. And there's just something that feels good about it. I guess that's why blacksmithing has drawn me in and has kept my attention for 14 years now. Since man learned to heat and bend steel, their work was out of necessity for making tools and weapons. The smiths, as they were called then, actually outnumbered doctors. Now, with only a few hundred smiths still working full time, their role in life has also changed. They make art instead of tools. blacksmith is more in the artistic area than in the functional area of repairing your farm equipment. I mean nowadays your iron pieces are purchased and bolted on where in days gone by the blacksmith would make that part to bolt on. And, and I'll be honest with you, there are times where I'm asked to, to recreate parts for uh, different pieces of equipment or do repairs like that. So I try to be fairly full serviced as much as I can be being a one-man shop. Joe says he's truly found his passion, especially when he's able to incorporate nature into his work. Right now I have a certain look about my work that has a natural element to it. When you look at him, you go, that is a sunflower, and it looks like a sunflower, and it moves like a sunflower, but it's in steel. How do you do that? How does that happen? When people ask that question, they go, how did you get that to happen? Well, you know, there's a lot of heat, a lot of manipulation, and it takes working in a harsh environment to make that happen. So there's different ways to accomplish different looks. These larger leaves are cut out from sheet steel and then heated and forged, textured, veined. They take more time. You know, that leaf's fairly quick, where when you get into more detail, like this uh, black gum, these veins are all hot chiseled in, and then, you know, it's creased, and then I take a chisel on its edge, uh, put the leaf on its edge while it's hot, and put the serrated edges in there. And that gets you the detail. Actually, this was, an, this was a, uh, pr a um, we were taking natural leaves and mimicking them, trying to do as much like the original leaf as you can. The sunflower leaves the same way, large central veins with just some hammer texture. So there's different ways to accomplish a natural look. And there's no place more natural than his garden to display his work. The garden has become a place where we can, for one thing, we can showcase some artwork, mm -hmm. put some pieces out so when people come by, uh, they will have some things. I do a lot of garden iron, uh, do a lot of work for people. Uh, they want arbors or trellises in their gardens. And when the day's done, Joe can sit down and enjoy his own work while doing a little picking on his front porch. You can see the excitement on a person's face when you've hit the nail on the head. When you bring a piece into their home and they've 
they've commissioned you to do a piece and they come in and you see it in their face. And sometimes they'll actually say, well, that's not what I was expecting, but it's more than what I was expecting. So when you do a custom piece for someone's home and it, it really sp speaks to them in such a way that it says, wow, that is really gonna look great in my house next to this. That's when I see it in their face, that's when you get the real job satisfaction.